Hey guys, just a little over a week ago, I was able to be part of probably one of the biggest international meetups of coaster enthusiasts I've ever seen here at Walibi Holland, including but not limited to coaster studios, coaster kids, chat from Ohio Valley coasters and coaster bots. Now the visit was part of the European trip of the American group, which I got into because of CoasterBots, but the fact that we got treated to a very unique day at Walibi Holland was largely thanks to MicroJo, aka that Vacoma guy who visits the park more than I can keep up with, and his insane ability to know just about anyone who works at or visits the park is crazy. In any case, this program was really something special, certainly something I've never experienced before. We've got early access into the park one hour before opening time, Half an hour of exclusive ride time on the flagship roller coaster Goliath, exclusive access to the backstage areas, and all of it was organized by the park's event manager Scott. All in all, this was definitely going to be a great day to visit Wallaby. Most of all, I was really excited to meet all of these YouTubers that I've known about and watched for years, finally in real life, all in the same place. I guess you might even call it a very ambitious crossover. So without further ado, Here's my vlog as a little snapshot of what this day was like. So we just got into the park and we have exclusive access. Nobody else has entered the park yet except for our group of American coaster enthusiasts and then there's coaster bots and a bunch of us Dutch fans who are able to join this trip. And um, next we get an hour of exclusive access into the park as well as half an hour of ERT on Goliath. And um, the whole thing is led by Scott, the event manager here, who's uh, an all-around awesome person and who's showing us around the park. So yeah, I am really looking forward to this. So uh, this is a true backstage kind of show over here. We're skipping everything to get straight onto the main street. And uh, currently we're making our way over to uh, Goliath. So we walked over to Goliath, walking through almost the entire empty park for a total of six rounds of exclusive ride time on Goliath, only stopping every time to switch seats. Before that though, Scott gave a short introduction to the park. For those of you who don't know, uh, our park opened in 1971. That's the same opening year as 1971. Come on. Walt Disney World. Oh boy. Walt Disney World? It opened in 1971, right? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Mark, we have the worst roller coaster enthusiasts here. They don't know the opening date of the Magic Kingdom. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> they have roller coasters there? Uh, no, they know that. <laughs> they have the dwarf thing, or have to get That right is <laughs> so dumb. Right. So yeah, that, that's when uh, when we opened, we were uh, um, uh, a really small local park without any rides. We only had some farms and some gardens where you could milk cows and and see how that experience was. And can then, we still find that experience today? <laughs> I can yeah, arrange that. For you. <laughs> Mark, we need a cow this afternoon. <laughs> he wants a cow. <laughs> Um, so and now we, um, yeah, then eventually it became Wallaby Flavro because you're in uh, Flavorland, that's one of our provinces in the Netherlands. Then Six Flags bought the entire thing, they bought a lot of parts here in Europe and made this part into Six Flags Holland. Uh, a few years later, uh, uh, Six Flags sold the entire thing um, to uh, an investment company and they brought the name Wallaby back and now we are Wallaby Holland. And it's going to stay uh, Wallaby Holland for a while now, believe me, trust me. And the sign still say. The Goliath, uh, there's Goliath going uh, some stats, it's 64.8 uh, meters in height, it goes 106 kilometers per hour, I don't, uh, I know the American guys say, what? So, <laughs> it's fast, um, <laughs> and you get to enjoy it for uh, for half an hour with only you guys, so it's, uh, it's all yours. Hello. I am here. <laughs> so this <laughs> this is coaster bots right here. We're filming each other, filming each other. Uh, okay. That is peak YouTuber. It is. Uh, yeah. But um, we're currently getting a backstage road yep. through the park to get some kind of shortcut to, I believe, it is yeah, Lost Gravity. Yeah, I think some good shots of Goliath. Oh yeah, this I've never seen a coaster from this perspective yeah. either. So yeah, this is really cool. We just came off of ERT in Goliath, yep. six rides, and then they asked us, hey, you know, we could keep on doing ERT in Goliath, or we can get some ERT on Lost Gravity as well. So we were all like, hell yeah. And hence we get this backstage tour. This is really cool. Also, I'm just gonna plug CoasterBot for a second here. If you don't know CoasterBot, he's a British YouTuber with a, a golden silky voice who makes really great YouTube videos about coasters. Anything from like, what is? to uh, vlogs as well, yeah. so uh, definitely go subscribe to him, he's one of my favorite coaster channels. Thank you, much appreciated. You're welcome. 
Here you can see it running, but unfortunately for us, Express Platform 13, which is a clone of Rock and Roller Coaster but outside, decided to be down for the rest of the day, and it only opened again when we just left the park. So that was a bit of a shame. That said, just to slip my opinion in here because I have been on this thing a few times before, I actually really like this coaster, perhaps even more so than Lost Gravity, which is a little bit of an unpopular opinion. But for me it's mostly because of the launch, which I think is really great, but the rest of the ride is also quite smooth, surprisingly so, and I think it's very fun. Normally you barely get to see this coaster itself, because from the rest of the park it's really hidden by foliage, far away from the paths, but from this staff area that we walked from, uh, we could see it really well, so almost everybody just stopped for a while there to take pictures and videos of the coasters. It's really weird to see these rides from an angle that you never really see them from, and the same goes for a lot of these paths, seeing the entire theme park all empty is kind of a surreal experience. We were also able to take pictures and videos of Lost Gravity testing before the park opens, and we could pretty much just walk wherever we wanted here. For those who don't know this coaster, it's the first and currently only build of Mech's Big Dipper model. It has a really quirky layout with inversions and snappy elements, but with very wide trains, which make it almost like a wing coaster or dive coaster. If anything, I think it's a very unique experience, and this ride alone makes traveling to Wallaby totally worth it if you're into coasters and you happen to be around. That said, unfortunately we couldn't ride it yet because the park ran into some minor issues with the brakes during testing. But since the ERT on Lost Gravity didn't work out, we're now getting an ERT on Draco. Which is, uh, I guess that's alright. That's a nice consolation prize. So, uh, this is the uh, first time trying him. Obviously, trying some business. Definitely a cookie. Yeah. Quality It's a cookie. Thank you for that, boys. Much appreciated. I gave it five crunches. <laughs> Out of five. That's pretty good. Five <laughs> After the other guys did a few biscuit reviews, Lost Gravity finally opened, just as the park opened to all guests. So we rode Lost Gravity right away. Now I've been on this thing before, because two years ago it was actually one of the first inverting coasters I've ever been on, and I rode it again a few times last year, so I already have a little bit of an idea of what this thing is like, so I don't think I can do much of a first time review. That said, I'm not a huge fan of this ride, I think it's a little bit gimmicky, and it seems that every year it's getting more rough, in a slightly strange and shaky way. Still, if there's one thing that almost everybody agreed on, it's that that first half is amazing, and especially the first drop is really fun. How much you enjoy the rest, I guess kind of depends on your tolerance of roughness. Speaking of rough coasters, after that we rode Robin Hood, the park's Vacoma wooden coaster. Now this thing is notorious for being a little bit shaky, maybe enjoyably so, but it's it's definitely quite out there. It's a wooden coaster after all, but it's it's mostly famous because it'll get retracked into an RMC hybrid coaster next year. So this might actually be my last ride on this coaster. All right, so after Lost Gravity, we went to Robin Hood, and um, me together with Herman, Glenn, and uh, also Harry from Coasterbot, we decided to hold hands for the entire ride, which was kind of painful at some point, uh, but it was actually kind of fun, and it made the usually kind of not so enjoyable Robin Hood a very fun ride. So uh, I definitely recommend holding hands with your friends when you're on this ride. We continued our trip through the park with a walk to Speed of Sound, which is the park's boomerang coaster. And this one is kind of special because it has a tunnel on the lift hill and onboard audio. And even though the music isn't really my taste, I still think it's a really fun and creative theme and a nice way to add something to the experience of what would otherwise just be a short back and forth coaster. It's not my favorite ride at the park, coaster wise, but I always like the atmosphere and the intense backward loop, which makes it worth it if you're there anyway. You're gonna film one little fountain. I am filming him filming a fountain. El Condor, or as it should be called nowadays, because that sign is slightly outdated, just Condor, is the only ride I don't want to ride when I'm at Walibi, but I find myself riding anyway, because everybody does, and it's a little bit weird not to do it then. But this thing is the first of the suspended looping coaster model, which you can find all over the world, but almost all of them are at least somewhat painful, and this one is certainly no exception. I absolutely hate this thing, to be honest. It's intense, but it's also really rough. It bangs your head around here and there, and it's just altogether not very enjoyable if comfort is something you highly value on a roller coaster like I do. 
for all. It was bad, you know, it's, it's an SSC, they're not great. But I've been on worse SSCs, like Tornado and Guard Man, it was worse. This, it does shuffle. There's one moment where it really plunged forwards. But, At that point, we had done just about everything there is to do in the park, including a ride on the ferris wheel, which you see here. So the staff at Wallaby decided to let us do some stuff that you normally never get to do. Taylor from Coaster Studios was given a staff outfit, and he was allowed to operate Goliath for a few rounds, pressing buttons and checking the restraints while the rest of our group skipped the entire queue just to ride Goliath with Taylor operating it. That was really fun, although I do feel a little bit bad for some of the other guests because we seriously held up the queue for a while. But I have to give a lot of respect for Wallaby for being so flexible and willing to do just about anything to give everyone a good time. And while we're at it, I should probably give a quick review of Goliath because I've never done that kind of thing on my channel, but it's one of my favorite coasters out there. I think I'm a little bit biased about it since this was really one of the first major coasters that I've ever been on. But regardless, it's an amazing ride and definitely the star attraction at the park, at least for me. It has a great drop, amazing airtime on the second hill, and those small bunny hops at the end of the ride might even be my favorite part of this coaster. I think I personally prefer the Megalite model when it comes to the smaller mega coasters like this, but regardless, Goliath is one of my favorite coasters out there, and I don't think that'll change anytime soon. Oh, and as for the shots of the coaster, our entire group was allowed into the staff-only areas underneath the ride, just to take pictures and videos of it, which was really cool. So this is a slice of life in uh, the Coaster Kids and Coaster Studios life. Taylor is doing his gimbal stuff over there. There's a review of Goliath right there with the Coaster Kids. And then Harry's just kind of hanging out with some Dutch dudes or something, I think. And then there's a bunch of other dudes as well. You're not irrelevant! Don't say that, come on! But uh, yeah, it's overall a great time. This is... Uh, that is Vekoma boy doing his best dab right there. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. So yeah, it's a great day. Except for that piece of junk over there in the distance. So now we're all of a sudden getting a uh, private tour of backstage behind Wallaby. Behind the uh, Robin Hood roller coaster right here. So as you can see, the Goliath staff area was followed up by a small backstage tour of Robin Hood which is a slightly less exciting coaster to look at perhaps, but on the other hand, it's a really nice opportunity because you barely get to see this coaster from the rest of the park. Aside from that, it's interesting to see the layout from up close, given that the entire thing will be reworked into an RMC hybrid coaster next year. At this point, we can only guess what the new layout is going to look like, but it'll probably follow the already existing hills and have a slightly higher but similar first lift hill and drop. Also, from what I've heard, only two other visitor groups were ever allowed into this area, so we might as well be the last visitors of the park to see Robin Hood like this before it'll be converted next year, which is pretty cool. So that just about rounds it up for my visit of Wallaby Holland, at least for this video. I've been trying to wiggle my way into vlogs from Coasterbots and Coaster Studios as well, plus perhaps some other videos, so I'll link or tweet something about that when the time comes. Anyway, thank you for watching guys, and a huge thanks to Coaster Kids, Coaster Studios and Ohio Valley Coasters for doing this trip with fans across Europe. I'll link their channels down in the description, and as well of course, thanks to the staff at Wallaby and Erin for driving me all the way out there. That's all for now, I'll see you next time.